best example of such a controversial, holy, sacred, symbolic site is that extremely complex piece of real estate that we typically refer to as the Temple Mount, uh, hearkening back to the two Jewish temples that stood on this spot, or the Haram al-Sharif, the noble sanctuary, referring to the Dome of the Rock to the, uh, and to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which had been constructed uh, on that site. It is arguably the most controversial piece of real estate on the globe, and as uh, one scholar is keen to note, there really is no neutral designation for this space. The minute I refer to it as the Temple Mount, I am, in essence, favoring the Jewish narrative over the Muslim one. The minute I use the Arabic term, I am favoring that designation, that narrative, over, over, the, over the previous one. And this site, it's really, in a way, a concatenation of several sites. As I already mentioned, we have the mosque, uh, we have the Al-Aqsa Mosque, we have the Dome of the Rock, which is a shrine, not actually a mosque. Then below, adjacent to these mosques, and below we have the Western Wall, the Kotel, the most extensive surviving portion of the enclosure wall that Herod in ancient times constructed for what became the compound upon which his temple was constructed, which is the holiest site uh, in the world for the Jewish people. The, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque constitute the third most holy site for Muslims. The course will, of course, cul culminate in, in, in this uh, extremely complicated site that, again, is really a collection of, of multiple Islamic sites and, in a sense, multiple uh, Jewish sites because there's been a tremendous, in a way, Israel's great success in liberating, as it understands it, East Jerusalem or the old city of Jerusalem in the Six-Day War in 1967 presented it with actually a tremendous dilemma. What would this most sacred, most special site of the Western Wall actually, what function should it actually play in Israeli society and in the Jewish world? Uh, is it a national site? And to many res in many respects, Israel has, pr has, has, has promoted the Western Wall as in the plaza that it created adjacent to it as a national site, many important national ceremonies, ceremonies of national importance. Uh, soldiers' oath-swearing ceremonies. I recall when I visited Israel as a, as, a, as, a, as a teenager, I was witness there to the celebration of the completion of uh, several hundred Ethiopian immigrants had completed their Hebrew course, and the, the celebration took place there. So it's a site for important national events, but of course it's also a religious site, and in fact the site has been declared by the uh, by the Israeli chief rabbinate as constituting officially a synagogue, which means that all of the provisions, stipulations of Jewish law as understood by the chief rabbinate of Israel, which means Orthodox Judaism, uh, need to apply there. Which means, of course, that vast segments of the Jewish world do not feel entirely at home at this space, who do not feel that they can practice Judaism as they would like to see fit. So alongside the tremendous tension between the Muslim and Jewish sides over this site, there's actually tremendous inner Jewish tension uh, over how this site should be developed. And just a few weeks prior, ironically, just a few weeks prior to the tremendous controversy that took place between uh, Muslims and, and the Israeli state over security measures and who really had the right to whether Israel had the right to install, install metal detectors on the site, which from the Muslim perspective was seen as a violation of the status quo, from the Israeli perspective was seen as simply a necessary practical measure in light of a terrorist attack that took place at the site and in light of the discovery of, in, in light of the fact that weapons had been stored at the site. So we see just how sensitive the site in fact is for both sides. But again, in a way, just as interesting as the inter- uh, religious controversy is the intra-religious controversy. So there have been, just a few weeks prior to, these, uh, to, the, to, the, to the violence, to the tensions between Jews and Muslims, between Israel and, and the Palestinians, there was tremendous acrimony in the Jewish world, at least in certain parts of the Jewish world, uh, concerning, uh, as a result of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's decision to not implement an agreement which had been carefully uh, constructed in past, uh, in recent years, 
that I would offer formal recognition to non-Orthodox streams of Judaism and enable them to pray at the site. And even on the Muslim side of the, of the equation, there are also a very deep uh, divides concerning really who has the ultimate say, who has ultimate ownership among Muslims over, over the Haram al-Sharif. Now, Israel has granted Jordan, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, special uh, uh, rights. Uh, in, in essence, Jordan continues to, to run these sites and funds the Waqf, the Islamic Trust that administers it. So Jordan is endowed with a special role vis-a-vis -vis these sites, which of course creates a certain degree of frustration for the Palestinian leadership, which sees East Jerusalem as the capital of its future state and sees the Haram al-Sharif as really as one of the central prizes, so to speak, in its, in its future territory. 